So we made glass, we made jade. Now we're gonna make a custom tool to save time and money. Let me show you why having a grinder in your shop is what you need. So we're gonna take this solid blank and we're gonna put it on the Walter Power Helitronic 400 and we're gonna make a custom tool for Titan. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna grind multiple operations into one tool, that way we can earn money and improve efficiency. So enough about that, let's get grinded. So in order to process Titan's custom tool, we have to go inside our tool studio. And this process is gonna be a little bit different. Now the first thing I have to establish in tool studio is my blank. So I'm gonna be using a one inch carbide blank that's five inches long. Now normally you would go about this process of making a custom tool by using the tool wizard. But since we're doing a custom multi-slot cutter, we need to go into user defined. After I hit user defined, since I've already created the program, we're gonna go ahead and walk through it. I'm gonna open up that folder. So I'm gonna select IDN, Go to recent. So now, after we define our blank, which is gonna be one inch diameter, five inches long, the next thing we have to do is we actually have to rough out some of the carbide. That way we can start making our slot cutters. I chose to go this route because if I start to flute it and I try to flute it all at once, that's gonna be removing a lot of carbide. But if I come and take some off the diameter in each spot, as it's fluting, it's not grinding as much carbide away and it's gonna be easier on our wheel. So in industry, how I would set this up is if I had multiple Walter machines, I would have dedicated roughing machines. These machines would rough out my blanks and then get them sent to another Walter. That way you can put the finished clearances on them and improve production. But that's not saying you can't do it. Here, what I did was I just wrote a separate program that way it allowed me to rough it out. Then I have an optional stop and I'm gonna change out my wheel to my finished 1A1 that way I can do my OD clearances. Moving on to the Tyrolit StarTech RC wheel. This wheel is gonna be a little bit different. So this wheel, you really have to push this wheel and challenge this wheel. What we don't wanna do with the Tyrolit StarTech RC wheel is feed it too slow with a high RPM. This can cause bouncing. You don't wanna do that. We wanna push this wheel, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna slow this wheel down. That way it has a chance to actually get up underneath that carbide and get it out of there. While this project roughs out, we're gonna go ahead and check CNC Expert. CNC Expert is a platform by machinists for machinists. Now, once this project is complete, it's gonna go right up on that platform, so make sure you go check that out. See, this is what happens when you take over from Barry. He's made 961 parts. Brother, ugh. That's all I gotta say about that. One thing I want to make sure of before I continue on with the grind is I want to make sure all of my grooves are the same width because for this custom tool, all of the multi-slots are going to be the same width with the same dimensions. All right, real quick, before we get to fluting, I want to go ahead and clean out my wheel. So I'm going to do a process called sticking the wheel. I got a 600 grit sharpening stick. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to plunge this into the diamond wheel and what that's going to do is going to get rid of some of that carbide. is that let's get to fluting so after we rough out our grooves the next operation is going to be roughing out our flutes now I chose to rough out our grooves because instead of roughing out all of the flutes at once removing a lot of the material off the diameter is really going to speed up our process and allow the flute grinding operation to go much smoother. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna make multiple passes. That way it's easier on my wheel and gives me better wheel life. So what's gonna make this end mill different than the jade and the glass end mill is that those end mills had a helical grind of 30 degrees. This one's gonna have an axial grind and that means that the wheel's gonna grind on the top and the A axis is not gonna turn and it's gonna grind the flutes in straight. So with the completion of the third pass, the tool has made the shape of what I wanted it to be. And 
now that we've roughed out our blank, the next thing we have to do is we have to create a clearance profile operation. That way we can establish our OD cutting clearances and our 45 degree chamfer clearances. So we're gonna start at the front of the tool and work our way back. We're actually gonna change wheels for this operation. And on the design, you can actually see where I start to probe this tool at. So for each one of these clearance profiles, I'm actually gonna follow the profile of what I want ground. So for my probe, it's gonna to touch all down the length of that flute and that's what's going to establish where that 45 degree is and where that outside diameter cutting edge is. So after I probe it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a wheel to follow that probe and follow that contour of my clearance angles. So to make this easier for myself, I'm just gonna do the same thing for each tool, but there's gonna be one major difference. With a 1A1 wheel, I'm gonna have trouble getting to the back of a part, so I need to go to a 1B wheel. So the reason why I have to use a 1B1 compared to a 1A1 is that the 1B1 will follow the profile correctly, whereas 1A1 will give me a lot of trouble. So we just finished doing the front and back OD clearances and 45 degree clearances. After looking at the part, they look absolutely perfect. So now the next thing we have to do is we have to copy this operation to the next two slot cutters and we'll be finished with our custom carbide tool. So I'm really happy with how Titan's tool came out. The Walter Helitronic Power 400 did an excellent job with grinding this part. So now there's gonna be two ways I can inspect this part. I can either take this part to Travis or I can show you something you haven't seen before. Follow me. Back in the early days, we used to have to cut off a piece of this tool, whether by EDM or actually grinding it down. That would allow us to check the inside geometry and the external features of the tool. So something like that would actually destroy the tool and take countless hours inside the inspection room, and that's gonna really hold up production. So the Walter Helicheck 3D enables you to use 3D laser scanning technology. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna increase grinding productivity and decrease inspection time. And that's gonna get tools on your floor and chips in your machine. Titan's custom tool actually has a whole lot of complex geometry on the outside diameter cutting edges as well as this minute chamfer in here that's very important to this custom cutting tool. This is going to be what makes the custom cutting tool make us money. So with 3D scanning this tool we can actually check all of our chamfers and outside diameter cutting edges to make sure they're all absolutely perfect. So after 3D scanning it we can actually measure all of our chamfers and cutting edges to make sure they're absolutely perfect. Hey Chris, how's it going man? Hey good man, I got the chamfer pulled up right now. Yeah, how's she looking? Uh, she looks perfect man, I love it. Good, I know the big guy wanted that to be spot on. Yeah, he wanted it to break that edge when it was at full depth. Mm -hmm. And the uh, rest of the tool? Yeah, so we can actually check the whole integrity of the tool. Okay. And I have it on 3D Matcher right now. Nice man, nice. Yeah, I'll print off the inspection report and I'll give it to you so you can certify it. Looks good to me man, I like it. Sweet, thanks. So real quick, let's talk about the difference between a jade end mill and Titan's custom multi-slot cutter. So the jade end mill had a 30 degree helix. That's gonna make it a helical cutter. So this is just a square end mill. Now what we just ground was an axial cutter. So the difference between an axial cutter and a helical cutter 
is that this had a 30 degree helix and this has zero degrees. So I had to do an axial cutter because I wanted all the slots to be in line with each other. That way it would make it easier for my 1A1 wheel and my 1B1 wheel to come down and do the 45 degree chamfer on each side. So that's the reason why I had to go and make an axial cutter. Now, with the jade end mill, if I tried to do that on the 30 degree helix, my teeth would be all over the place and I would have had to make constant movements to try and get there. So that would have took a lot of time. We're all about efficiency here. Now that's why I decided to do an axial cutter multi-slot tool. So this custom tool is going to be used by Titan in an upcoming video. If you like what we're doing and like where we're at, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.